All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. All right, today I'm going to do a quick defensive video on canceling the C-gap, something that's uh, very important when you're playing uh, spread football teams, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it from traditional 4-2-5 stuff and then from where we struggled a little bit this year in tight front three high safety stuff. Make sure you check out some of our partners, Dome Hats, the headwear sponsor that I use for, uh, for play fast football in the school I'm currently at. This is our... Most recent snapback play fast hat. If you like customizable, if you like cool fitting hats with great customer service and people that take care of athletics in the local community, check out Dome Hats, Baker Sporting Goods, company I use for uh, coaches' gear, players' gear. Our uniforms are distributed by them. Anytime uh, we do anything with our fans, we try and do it through Baker Sports with a fan store. Uh, so make sure you check out Baker Sports. Just play football, uh, the best play drawing tool on the market. If I'm going to be diagramming anything for a clinic or a webinar uh, or doing anything where I need to diagram plays, I'm always going to use Just Play. Check them out. Game Strat, sideline replay system we use. Used it for the last four year, years now. Uh, unbelievable. Never have an issue with the with the hardware. It's always some type of user error, user error on our part. Great customer service. Uh, friendly guys that are really good for the business. So check out Game Strat. Difference USA. The ultimate striking machine, you get thousands of reps without needing a partner. High and tight ball security training aid uh, that you can use with your skill players. Gives them instant auditory feedback if they do not hold the ball in the proper position. With the wrist above the elbow, proper points of pressure, the ball held high and tight, they won't hear the beat. If they don't hear the beat, they know they're doing something wrong, so you get that instant feedback. And then Stand Perfect, which is a training aid we use with younger kids earlier in the season to get kids into stances. Great for offensive linemen. You want to teach that. Right side, left side, heel, toe, stagger, whatever your stance is, however you want to teach it, uh, however wide, narrow your stance is, whatever you believe in as a coach. If you want to teach your defensive lineman what a stance should look like, you put them on the ground, the kids put their feet in them, you can get uh, a, a ton more reps without having to coach up, move your foot back four inches, over three inches, put your feet in them, all right, you can get multiple reps ready to go, baseball, softball, golf, football, the possibilities are endless, so check out Stand Perfect. All right, so... If you are coaching in today's game, you are going to see a bunch of 20 slash 11 personnel, a bunch of twins open, a bunch of spread sets, still two back sets, still carry gap schemes, still carry split flow. So you're going to have to be able to defend all those things. And one of the ways all right, that you're always going to defend them within your gap scheme system is, is you're going to try and cancel gaps by spilling, getting the ball to go wider, and then replacing and canceling that C gap. Right. So if we were, if we were a 4-2-5 team, and we saw power, and we got the double here working back. We got the back block there, we got the hinge here, all right, and you get the pull and you get the full back lead. One of the first things you try and do is you try and cancel that C gap with a spill. So off the down block, you try and get that into spill. The mic is gonna straight paint and run tight, all right? The guard, if you spill it properly, the guard's gonna have to bubble, the ball's gonna have to bubble. The mic is inside out spilling, and there's your force player, your free hitter, your nickel out there waiting for the ball to get sent to him, right? So that's one of the ways you would cancel the C-gap if you were 4-2-5 team or an even front team. If they were trying to run counter and they're trying to go the other way with it, all right, now what's going to happen is off the down blocks here, okay, off the down blocks here, you're going to get this end to squeeze and, and wrong arm. He's going to make the guard log. All right, so now if you were getting GT counter, he's going to make the guard log, which makes the tackle go wider. Now the will linebacker has to scrape paint tight and try and spill the tackle to the weak safety there. All right, so you're trying to cancel those seat gaps with spills. You're trying to off of down blocks. You're trying to get your guys the wrong arm. You're trying to get them flat off the down block inside the guard, make the ball bubble a little bit wider, get the backers reading, understanding that now your backers cancel the seat gap. All right, as your, as your ends spill, they essentially become quasi B-gap players. The ball spills to the C-gap, which is canceled by the Mike and the Will reading the pull schemes and running over the top. And then the ball gets sent to whatever the structure of your defense is. The ball gets sent to your extra hitters in some type of eight-man front philosophy in the old 4-2-5 schemes. All right, well, we did a lot of talk this year. I did a lot of talk this last year about three high safety defense from the, the tight front. And theoretically, schematically on paper, why we like it so much. All right, but we had some issues this year. And a couple of those issues stemmed from a few things. Number one, we weren't very big up front, okay? So when we were playing 
our type front stuff. All right, the type front is probably made, although you could probably move and slam and do some different things, in the college game or in the NFL game, it's made with bigger bodies that occupy more space. We weren't very big up front, so that was one of the issues we had. All right, but then it's also in the three high system, it's made to send the ball to a quote unquote second or third level middle safety. All right, so a second or a third level middle safety that needs to understand formations. He needs to understand how to fit, where to fit. All right, it, it's made to get the ball funneling to that player, and that player should be involved in a lot of your fits and make a lot of plays because now you have to be extremely, uh, extremely adamant about how you're going to cancel C gaps because with the tight front, the A gaps and the B gaps are going to be canceled just by alignment. So the ball is naturally going to work its way wider. People are going to do things like pin and pull. They're going to do things to get the ball out to the C gap because that's where they feel like they can effectively attack the defense. Well, from a defensive standpoint, one of the reasons we went to this concept was because we were smaller up front and because we couldn't find enough defensive linemen to play four down, we were also having a hard time. Uh, we weren't as effective as we should be spilling the ball, which is probably more coaching than it is uh, a player's ability. We weren't as effective as we wanted to be spilling the ball. And then we didn't hold up. Our three techniques didn't hold up real well versus double teams, so they were constantly getting blocked into the lap of our linebackers, and our linebackers couldn't run. So when we decided to go tight front three high, in my, in, in my opinion or theory of what I looked at, I'm going to make the ball spill by the alignment of the defense. So if I can't get my ends to be good spill players, for whatever that reason may be, some kids just don't understand. Some kids aren't physical enough to do it. Some kids, when they get on the field, won't read their keys. Some kids, maybe you just don't give enough reps to. Some kids don't want to spill because they're not going to get highlights. If they spill, they know somebody else is going to make the tackle. So I've dealt with all of those things in my career. I've been at places where we've spilled pretty good. I've been at places where we've had players that were smart enough Discipline enough and physical enough to spill the ball and then I build it play. I've been at places where we didn't spill very well We had players that always wanted to go up the field. They didn't really read All right, their visual key to see what was going on and then I've been at places where kids didn't spill because I'm not spilling coach if I spill I'm not gonna make plays now obviously that's a coaching You know deal that you're in if a kid doesn't want to spill and he's capable of spilling and he refuses to spill now you got to find another player because that kid is detrimental or cancerous to the team because he's doing things that he wants to do based on what's best for him, not what's best for the team. But I've seen all those issues. So we don't have a lot of D linemen in our program right now. Uh, our bigger kids are playing offense. Offensive line, we had a tough season this year. We were three and seven, but we were at, as of a week ago, we were number six or seven in the area on offense. So we were doing a lot of good things on offense, but we were really poor on defense. If I took some of my bigger offensive linemen, I'd probably have more success playing defense, but I don't know if, I've had, if I'd have the same success playing offense, right? So it's always a, a, you know, a, a conundrum for coaches to be in. Do you play your guys both ways? Do you play them 67 snaps, 60 to 70 snaps? Do you risk them getting hurt? You know, are they in, in shape to do it? Are they conditioned enough? Does the other team play guys two ways? Are you going to wear down late? But we just don't have a lot of defensive linemen in our program. So when we played this year, Okay, we were about 190 pounds at this spot, 170 pounds at this spot, and probably 200 pounds at this spot with a 200-pound mic and 185-pound will. So in the box, we're kind of light to be playing that tight front theory. All right, now you can get away with it at linebacker because those kids should be able to run because you're going to be sending the ball to places on purpose. So theoretically, when I studied the defense and I looked at it, by playing the tight front, the ball is going to get to the C gap or wider just by the alignment of the defense. All right, so teams are going to pin and pull and they're going to get the ball out there. Teams are going to, you know, try and arc release on the four eye and maybe kick them with the fullback to run a gap power. There's going to be some different things that teams try to do, but you almost, as a defense, you kind of know where the ball is trying to work. So you should be able to fit it a little bit better, right? So in this defense, when you're starting to get gap schemes, What's going to happen is most of the time you're going to get a down block on the 4 eye. Now, if your 4 eye was a big physical kid that could hold the point of the down block, that's going to do you 
all right, a, a, a bunch of service because now there'll be less room for the ball to go. If your four eyes a kid that likes to move and penetrate and he gets blocked a gap and a half down, now the C gap is that much wider and it's tougher to fit when, when the C gap becomes that much bigger. Usually you're going to see some type of either double on the nose, scoop on the backside four, or you're going to see some type of down, down, down block there. All right, so now the lead block would come here and you need your nickel to come up. He's still a force player, nothing's changed. He's got the same job, he's just got to take the block on of that fullback because now the fullback's not going to be spilled by the defensive end. The defensive end has essentially spilled the ball by alignment. So we're sending the ball to the same place we want to send it in the 4-2-5. Now we've just got to figure out how to fit it. What ends up occurring is it now still becomes the Mike linebacker scraping paint and being tight here. Okay, so now when the puller comes, you still want the Mike linebacker scraping paint and being tight. So the, the, from those two positions, the only slight nuance is your force player is actually probably going to be blocked by the fullback as opposed to you sending the ball to a free hitter. And then the key in the whole defense is now the middle safety running the alley between the force player and the spill of the mic. Right? So you're getting the ball out to the C gap. But based on how you're playing your force defender, and based on how you're playing your inside backer, and based on how you're playing the front and the middle safety, the ball's going to get to the C-gap in the same manner. You just have to cancel that C-gap in a different way, and it's usually that middle safety that ends up being the guy to cancel the C-gap. Now, one of the reasons we struggled a little bit this year is the kid that we played the last five or six games with at middle safety is in ninth grade. He's going to be a very good football player. He's just physically a little bit outmatched right now at the varsity level, and the game with shifts, trades, and motions moves a little bit too fast for him as a ninth grader right now. So as he sees it more, as he gets stronger, he's going to be a really good player. And I think if we decide to stay in the same defensive structure, I think he's going to be somebody that can be a very good player for us in that role. Now, you should also get a free runner depending on how they're trying to block it. All right, If, if the tackle has to block the 4-I and they have to block down and back, all right, you, they're going to have a hard time getting to the will, so your will should be a free runner. So you should gain a free runner from your inside backer, all right, on, on the backside. Now, if they decide to double the nose, if they decide to double the nose and get to the will, well, now your four-eye on the backside has got to be a player that makes this an issue because the hinge block on a four-eye, unless you've got a Division One offensive tackle, the hinge block on a four-eye is a very tough block. So the two theories versus the power play, are all, they're, they're, they're almost identical. We're trying to get the ball spilled. The 4-2-5, we spill it with an end, and we eat up the block of the fullback, and now the guard comes and he gets spilled by the mic, and you send the ball to the nickel. Well, now in the tight front, what you're trying to do is spill the ball by alignment, so the ball has to get spilled because with the four-eye inside, there really shouldn't be anywhere to run the power inside. Right? So the ball is probably going to have to go wider. The fullback blocks the nickel. So instead of the nickel being the extra player, he's the force player being blocked by the fullback. The mic scrapes paint and spills the puller, and the middle safety runs the alley. So you're, you're still canceling the C-gap. Right? You're still canceling the C-gap. You're just trying to do it in a little bit different manner. Right? So the, the one that gets a little bit tougher for us is when we see... OFGF, however you want it, when we see the counterplay, all right, because now you need a middle safety that can not only recognize some things, but you need a middle safety that can run, and he's got to be good in space because the counterplay gets a little bit tougher for us, all right, because now when you get the counterplay, we're still going to spill it by alignment, so if they block the four eye down and they double the nose back to the mic and they scoop the four eye there, now you're going to get a pull and another pull, and now you've only got the Will, who needs to spill the ball to the weak safety, but they also have a puller for the weak safety. The wild card in the defense is that kid that when number three goes away, he plays slow through the backside, all right, and now he's got to have the ability to run and be able to make some plays on the other side of the ball because his three went away, right? So if his three goes away, he can be a slower cutback player, all right? But as he gains more uh, uh, football knowledge and football, he becomes more football savvy and he sees more reps, 
He knows that when this guy goes away, he knows that he's going to be a cut back to a fast flow over the top player based on how the will's playing it. All right, so what ends up happening is the middle safety has a longer way to run versus the, uh, the GT or the GF counter. So that play is a little bit tougher, or it should be schematically. It should be a little bit tougher than the power play. The power play should be a little bit easier, okay? But where you also need help on defense is, is getting backside guys to understand how to vice and be there so that if the ball does have any inside room to run, you have cutback players involved. All right, so how you cancel the C-gap on defense is always going to be something that is very, very pivotal. All right, one of the things we tried to do late when we were struggling with it is we tried to play the mid front to where now away from the passing strength, all right, we added a jack or a, a rush linebacker, so away from the passing strength, we physically put a guy there. So now when we were sitting... Okay, like this. All right, what we ended up doing was we ended up playing it with a single backer, a middle safety, and now you still have your weak safety over here, right? So if you could cancel the C-gap now with the jack to where now the jack can spill, all right, and this is where we struggled. Our jack was used to being a 4-I. He didn't have to spill all year, so by the time we went to this late, a lot of times off down blocks, he stayed too far up the field. So now when you get the counter play, okay, so now you get that block there, you get that doubled or whatever you want to do. Now when you get the counter play, if he's kicked, now the ball gets a chance to wrap up inside, okay, and now again, you've got your weak safety here that you would try and send the ball to. You might, when he reads these schemes, should be over the top of the four eye, and here comes your middle safety playing behind the mic. So again, you should still gain three bodies for those two pullers or, or two pullers and a ball carrier, all right? And, but if the jack was somebody from day one that knew he had to spill, now you could get this spilled, the ball could get sent to the weak safety, and he could box it back to the mic or the middle safety run. So as we struggled with, with the base tight front, we went, we couldn't make wholesale changes with our front, so we just went to the mid front package and we put the jack up on the ball, but what started happening for us was our jack was getting kicked. And now on counter, they were getting kicked, C-gap was there, puller was getting up on the mic, all right, and then your weak safety and your middle safety have to be really good players to understand that if the ball goes back inside, this kid needs to be able to vice and fold back inside, and your middle safety. The problem we had was our middle safety got too aggressive downhill and he got caught in all the wash and the back blocks and the doubles. You need a kid that's got a little bit more patience to understand how to go over the top of all that. And then, in essence, he ends up just kind of running the alley on the other side of the defense. So, you know, we didn't just sit in the tight front all year and let teams run the ball and, and not be able to cancel the C-gap. We made some changes to where, you know, we did some things this past week. We even tried to cancel gaps with stunts. Okay, but again... Schematically, the thing you've got to remember is you are only as good as what your players can do. Okay, so this past week we even played the shaded front to where we became more almost in, you know, an under front look, except we still played our front side end in a four eye, and we tried to run the old fashioned twist stunt, okay, to cancel the A and the B, and then we tried to run the old fashioned pirate stunt to cancel. the A and the B, to get the ball out to the C gap, and now that you're canceling the A and the B, all right, when you get back block pull, your mic should be a kid that knows to run tight over the top to the C gap, and that's how you're going to cancel the C gap, because you're making the ball go there because of the gaps you're taking away with the two games. All right, well, the issue we had was because we hadn't been playing that style of front all year, our kids weren't used to running those games, and then they weren't used to getting those calls, and we missed them a few times in the game to where we should have been in a pirate or we should have been in a twist and we didn't twist and now we're not taking away the A gap. If the linebacker runs because he thinks he's getting the twist and the jack stays, now you've got the jack and the mic over the top and the ball goes right down the A gap. All right, so again, how you cancel the C gap in, in football is a big deal, especially for our spread teams, especially for our spread teams that are either 20 or 11 personnel 
or even if they're 10 personnel, but they use the tailback as a blocker and they can get the gap schemes with the quarterback, you are going to have to figure out ways to effectively cancel the C gap. If you're a 4 2 5 team, you're going to spill, get your mic and your will to scrape paint tight, and they're going to spill, all right, the puller, and you're going to send the ball to a free hip. If you're a, a, a tight front team or a 3 2 team, you're going to spill the ball to a middle safety who's got to be a really good player filling the alley and running from eight yards deep and understanding blocking schemes, especially against 20 personnel or 11, if the sniffer is highly involved in power counter, split flow deals, whatever, you got to get that middle safety to understand who's number three, where is he, what's the blocking scheme, where is he taking us, all right? Because again, one of the things we talked about that theoretically we like so much was we should never have to worry about that, that Y off or that fullback getting vertical in a play action passing game or in an RPO deal with a pop because we have somebody playing him vertically. So it's not like the old school split field defense where you're playing eight man front and you're playing quarters of two read on one side and sky or cloud or some type of eight man front theory on the other side. Well, now the middle of the field's open. If that tight end, Y, 11, sniffer, whatever you want to call him, if he gets vertical on the middle of the field open, you're going to have some issues. If you take your backside safety to play him on verticals, then you're going to have some issues on the counterplay like we talked about or things that sending the ball to a safety who's also responsible for a three vertical to the other side, right? So those are always the cat and mouse games, the schematical games, the checkered chess games that you love in the coaching world. But I just want to take a look today in this video about canceling the C gap. There's different ways to do it. You have the way you would do it in your 4-2-5, spilling the ball, getting the backer over the top, scraping paint, sending the ball to a free hitter. And then in the tight front, you're kind of spilling the ball, you know, my opinion of the tight front was we already had the ball spilled because of the 4-I. We were going to force down blocks on the 4-I, and the ball should go wider than the 4-I, and now that we know where the ball should go, we should have kids that should be able to run and fit it. But again, no scheme is good if it's not played with fundamentals and techniques. It's not good if you don't read things correctly, and it's not good if you don't do a good enough job coaching the run fits within the defense. Every defense has to be taught with run fits. Every defense has to be taught with visual keys and, and pressure keys and how to you know, block destruction, not just running around blocks or penetrating deep. We had light guys that felt like their get off off the ball was their only advantage. So we probably should have been more of a head up, slant and angle team and bring a fourth rusher away from the side we slant and angle and try and spill and play defense that way. That probably, in hindsight, looking back, probably would have been a better way for us to play defense. Uh, if you are not a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, make sure you turn your notifications on so you know every time we do a video, we go on YouTube Live. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like this or you don't like the, the, the video. It lets us know the content we need to do, different content, how we present the content. Always leave a message. If it's football related, I will respond to that message even if it's uh, a negative comment about the video. If you disagree with my opinion, that's your right. That's what makes the world so perfect. Uh, if it's just a, a disagreement about the opinion, I always respond. If it's just a clickbait deal trying to get me to do something or trying to get somebody else to go to a site, then I'm never going to respond. But I love interacting with uh, the fan base. I love interacting with people that follow Play Fast. If you're still playing football in the playoffs, good luck to you. Uh, if you're getting into the offseason like I am now, uh, get, leave me a message. Let me know what you're going to study in the offseason. Let me know what you're looking at. Let me know some things you did this year that worked for you really well. If you played tight front three high safety defense and it was good for you, let me know how you did it and, and what you had success with, success with because, excuse me, I'm, I'm always trying to learn as much as everybody else. So I'm always trying to steal ideas, borrow ideas, find different ways, better ways to teach that, excuse me, uh, buzzwords, catchphrases, whatever it may be, um, you know, the, the pedagogy of how you teach it. I'm always looking to get better myself. So if you play tight front three high defense, leave a message, let me know what you did, let me know how it was successful as always. I appreciate everything you guys do for me and play fast football. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I will see you next time.